Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and this is Video Response 9 to Step 1 Survival's Bug Out Bag Inch Bag Challenge. And the subject of today's video is maps and navigation. Yeah, it does look like a lot of stuff, and and no, you, I don't feel like you would want to carry this stuff in your bug out bag or your inch bag. I mean, you certainly could if you chose to. I mean, that's up to you. But what we're going to do is, is from this uh, mess here, we're going to go ahead and break it down into items so you can make sensible decisions on land navigation adjuncts to assist you in bugging out. An incredibly powerful navigational adjunct that you carry with you every day is your cellular telephone. It's a compass, it's a clinometer, it's an altimeter and a barometric pressure sensor. With a simple free app, it's a rudimentary theodolite. You can instantly find your coordinates with websites such as findmestar.com, which actually allows you to go to USNG, MGRS, UTM, decimal degrees, and degrees in decimal minutes. Or another site that will give you your position in USNG, MGRS, is usngapp.org. And these will both work off-grid as long as you save the page. And this isn't even taking into account the Google Maps or GMAP4 or iPhone navigation or any of your other built-in navigational programs and mapping programs when you're on the grid. Your smartphone is an incredibly powerful navigational tool just with those handful of things and there's several other apps and mapping programs and everything else you can utilize. But all of this is a spoiled and all of this is dependent upon the battery in the phone in certain circumstances network coverage and also in all circumstances for real-time positional fixes on GPS technology. So let's talk about options that work without the benefit of all that technology. With a handful of small items we can navigate without the benefit of this electronic technology fairly accurately with just a handful of items such as a base plate type compass a notepad with some kind of writing in instrument, a grid reader which is either a commercial one such as this or one you've built yourself, and a properly gridded topographical map. Very briefly we're going to talk about the importance of standardizing coordinate systems with whoever you're working with. For example this is going to be our location right here which I've conveniently placed at the grid intersection on this map for Latin long coordinates. It's extremely important to ensure that all of your equipment that not only you're using corresponds to your maps and map datum and coordinate system. Uh, you can see that all of my stuff is using WGS84 map datum. As we saw on our map, we have a position marked on our map. The position on that map is expressed in a coordinate system using latitude and longitude and that is because the map is gridded in seven and a half minute squares. Now latitude and longitude grids are measured in minutes so it's kinda hard to put that wrap your head around that when you're thinking about in terms of distance and there is some math involved in order to convert that over to something that can be readily used. Also using latitude and longitude you go up and left in the USA because we are in the northern hemisphere and we're west of the prime meridian. This is Earth. This is the North Pole. This is the South Pole. This line bisecting here is the equator. This is the prime meridian. This incision represents the prime meridian which essentially divides the Earth into two hemispheres all right, the second incision here allows me to remove this, and this represents a meridian of longitude. This incision represents the equator. The equator, bisecting the Earth, divides it into a northern and southern hemisphere. These lines are known as parallels of latitude, and this represents a parallel 
of latitude. You have your equator here, and then you have your first parallel of latitude. Now, the two most commonly used methods of expressing coordinates in latitude and longitude are degrees, minutes, seconds, and decimal degrees. So we look at our first coordinate here, that would be 29 degrees, 50 minutes, 0 seconds, north, 82 degrees, 50 minutes, 0 seconds, west. And in decimal degrees, be 29.8333 degrees north and 82.8333 degrees west. Now, a superior system, in my opinion, is MGRS or USNG, but not all of your maps are gridded as such, and take that into consideration. But it's a, it's a simple way to express the number. You don't end up having to use north or south, and no matter where you're at in the world, you're going to read right, and then you're going to read up. So that makes it very, very simple for you when using a grid tool or anything of that nature regardless of your position in the globe. Grids are measured in meters. Meters are a commonly known system of measurement and it's a base 10 which makes mathematical computations much more simple. And if we look at it the way it's broken down we'll just use the USNG as an example. Now the 17 Romeo represents a grid zone designator. We're going to go ahead and talk about this is our 100k grid which let's say this is our 100k grid okay this grid right here is our 10k grid and then this is our 1k grid this is our 100 meter grid this is our 10 meter grid and this is our 1 meter grid so there's a high level of precision involved and you could subdivide it even further but commercially available GPS's are seldom able to maintain even one meter resolution on positional accuracy. So to express these coordinates over the radio would be 17 Romeo Lima Papa 228720173 and it's the exact same as USNG. What can really be useful in this system too is, is when you're, for tactical communications, when you're working close to one another in the uh, same grid square and the same 100K grid, you can eliminate these two from your radio transmission and then you don't need to give one meter of precision accuracy. So there you go, there you can give your position. Uh, position is 22870172. Now UTM is another system that uses 100 meter grid squares just like MGRS or USNG and the numbers are broken down just a little bit differently. The grid zone designator is still present but what we do is we have numerical values instead of alphabetic values for our 100K along with whatever escape map you choose you're going to want some additional items to go along with that. You're going to want a map case. Uh, this right here is just a two and a half gallon Ziploc bag, multifunctional, inexpensive, and these work rather well. You're going to want a Fresnel lens, and I carry an additional one of these in my fire kit, but they don't weigh anything at all. As a matter of fact, you can fit one of these in your wallet, and they're going to provide you with the magnification to view map details. And also, in case you lose your reading glasses or whatever have you, or need to remove a uh, splinter. I mean they're they're extremely useful and multi-purpose. Notebook. Uh, notebook is extremely important to have along with a pencil. Uh, I prefer a pencil over a pen because I can always sharpen my pencil and you can use the shavings from it as tender if necessary. The notebook I've chosen is just a field notes passport size and these are my map scales for my chosen map that I've already got in here and I have a couple of paper clips and I can just clip my magnifier inside of this right here it keeps that all together 
a uh, set of 8x32 binoculars. These aren't particularly expensive ones, but these allow you to see things from a distance, of course, and can be extremely useful. Pacing beads. Uh, I've just made these out of 10 30 second lock nuts and a piece of 550 cord. So, this is something you can, cheapy project you can make yourself. You'll want some form of a base plate compass, and this one here is a Silver Ranger, which is a very nice compass, um, but you don't need something this expensive. See, it's got a mirror on it, sighting mirror, and uh, you can use that as a signal mirror if necessary. You have a small magnifier on here. Uh, what's really nice is, is this one here does have these uh, self-luminous dots on it. Those dots are extremely helpful when navigating at night. And you can see here it does have a couple of different scales on there. And of course it has a straight edge. And this model of compass is adjustable for declination if you choose to. The cordage for the lanyard you also use in your map to measure curves. Like if you want to measure the distance on a road or trail. And then I had an extra Fox 40 whistle and just threw that on there. The map you put into your bug out of your inch bag should be large enough to cover the area that you're going to travel from your usual everyday location or the area you live in and your bug out location or wherever you're headed to. And there's various levels of detail that you're going to be able to get out of maps. And uh, we'll start with like an extremely detailed map. This is a orienteering map. And you can see the level of detail in this, but you can also see this is a 1 to 10,000 scale. So it's not covering an extremely large area. Here's another example of a detailed map that uh, doesn't really cover a very large area, and you would need several of them. Generated it with grids from missionmanager.net, and these are USNG or uh, MGRS grids. So a very detailed map, but then again it doesn't cover much area. This is a good example of a topo map that would be good for navigation while balancing a uh, smaller scale. Uh, this particular map here covers a distance of seven and a half kilometers by 12.2 kilometers. So, and you can see the level of detail in this has enough to navigate on, and again you would need several of these put together, build yourself a book, and you would have plenty of detail with a uh, model such as this. An excellent compromise, in my opinion, for your map for your bug out bag is to pull pages out of the Atlas Gazetteer. The pages pulled will be relevant to your location you're heading to and the location you're heading from. So if you had a normal, typical route from your home to wherever your location was you were planning to head to, you would pull out those pages. On the back side, you know, you have a typical grid. So in this example here, let's go ahead and just for demonstration's sake, let's say we're leaving from Trenton. What we would want to do is, is we would want to pull pages out. We would want to pull out pages next to it, 63, 64, 65. And then let's say that our location we were headed to was somewhere in page 51. So we want to pull out 50, 51, 52, 53, and 54. And we would pull out all those pages and assemble ourselves a book. This is the level of detail that you get out of the Atlas Gazetteer series. And it is gridded, but it's gridded with uh, Latin long grids and not UTM grids because your UTM or your USNG MGRS grids would be tiny. Um, this map covers from 
center point here to the outside 22 and a half miles and it covers 33 miles along this length so you can see it's got quite a bit of coverage and also there's a lot of detail it shows all of your back roads and there's enough detail in here to navigate by land it doesn't give you as much detail as you would desire but it's an excellent compromise in my opinion what you would do is of course is you would break it down like you have 64 65 here and then you had 63 just on this side so there's three of your map pages right here and the weight isn't bad and you can fold it up it's somewhat durable and to bring in our detail even better we would go ahead and use our Fresno lens here and you can see how that brings out our detail and this is a prepackaged solution meaning that you're not going to have to spend a lot of time on the computer printing up your own map book uh, now what's nice about this too is is for your vehicle based solution you could go ahead and collect an entire region's worth of maps and place those in your vehicle and the detail from a motor transport aspect is fantastic in these maps well, I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.